Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to set up your Raspberry Pi for use with A2 Cloud. I'm going to go pretty fast because there's details on the website and also there's, uh, there's a lot of information about basic setup of Raspberry Pi that you can find out there. But, in a nutshell, when you buy a Raspberry Pi, all you get is the board. You don't get any cables, you don't get any anything. And so what you're going to need is a power adapter. Here one is. It's got to be a micro USB connector. Um, and it should supply at least one amp of current. I'm using a cell phone charger, like if it's a, but like for a good cell phone, you know, the, the smartphone. If a, a, a dinky cell phone charger ain't going to get it done and may cause problems. Um, then you're going to want to attach Ethernet so that you can get online. Now, you don't have to use your Pi with a screen and keyboard, and there's ways of using it from another computer, which are detailed on the website, and I might explain later, but if you're just starting out, the easy thing to do might be to attach a screen. So you can attach a screen either by the composite connector or the HDMI connector. In this case, I'm doing it with the composite connector. Um, and you are going to want to attach a screen and keyboard, uh, uh, a mouse and keyboard. Or at least just a keyboard. You don't need need the mouse, except you might at one point. In this particular case, I'm using a Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse, and this is the receiver here, plugged into the USB port. But that could just as easily be a wired keyboard, and it could be a wired mouse. Now, because there are only two USB ports, you may find yourself in need of a USB hub if you want to keep a keyboard and or mouse attached to your Pi. Um, I use my Pi without a keyboard and mouse. I really just use it as an Apple II peripheral, and I don't need to use a hub. Anyway, but you will need some way of typing on your Pi to get A2 Cloud set up, so the easiest way to do that is with a keyboard and screen attached. You don't need a mouse. All right, so what I'm going to do now is we have the mouse plugged in to a screen, and I'm going to attach power to the Pi and it's gonna start up, which will take a couple minutes, so you can imagine hold music in your head while that happens. If you're not sufficiently entertained by this demo and the waiting of computers to do things, well, you get what you pay for. So, all right, so what this is, is the Raspbian operating system starting up. This is a pretty typical Linux style startup, um, and you know, you can even start up a Mac and get similar information if you hold down the right keys. So, anyway, um, it boots up, and then you will be taken to its command line, and you can type on it directly. Now, if you watch the first video, you'll saw you'll you you saw that I was logged in to its command line via an Apple II, and that's great and everything, but you can't do that when you first install the Raspbian operating system. Oh, I forgot to mention, of course, that the Raspberry Pi uses an SD card for storage. So you will need an SD card of at least four gigabytes to use A2 Cloud. Um, and you will want to install the Raspbian operating system on it. There's lots of tutorials on how to do that. There's an explanation on my website. Um, and I also, if you're a Mac user, provide a utility called Pi Filler to help you install it. Um, it's pretty straightforward to install on the card, but you know, if you have difficulty, let me know. All right, so now we have installed Raspbian, let's say, and now we have plugged a keyboard into our Pi, and we have a screen plugged into our Pi, and now we are going. We booted it up, and we're going to log in. The default password is Raspberry, and here we are at the prompt. Here is how you install A2 Cloud. This command is on the website, so you don't need to memorize it here. But actually, you don't even need to type all of that. You can just type wget apple2.ivanx.com slash a2 cloud slash setup semicolon source setup. That's the magic invocation. And now it'll take you through the installer and the easiest thing to do is just answer yes to all the questions. Which I'm not even going to get into right now. But they're there. Now this is going to go quite quickly because actually a2 cloud has already been um, installed on this Raspberry Pi. And if you do that, then the installer whisks right through because it doesn't need to repeat all the things. But it can take up to an hour uh, otherwise, so you should be prepared to get a sandwich or something. When you're done, it'll say A2 Cloud is now ready. Restart your Raspberry Pi now. I suggest that you do so. And 
then, but I'm not going to right now. All right, but you would, and then at that point, it would, um, you would have A2Cloud installed. So then the next step is you need to shut down your Raspberry Pi, which actually, once it's installed, I provide a handy command for doing so. You can type A2, hang on, do I have caps lock on? I do, A2Cloud shutdown. That didn't work at all, so. I meant system shutdown was what I meant. There's a Unix command for that that's a little bit longer and more torturous. But, and in truth, you can usually just disconnect power from your Raspberry Pi and it's no big deal. But we wanted to do a clean shutdown. Okay, we've shut down our Pi. And now what we want to do is we want to interface it to our Apple II. Now, what I am going to do is... Hang on. This is not pro photography here. All right, what I am going to do is I am going to get rid of the keyboard because I don't need it anymore. I've got A2Cloud installed, and I'm going to get rid of the screen because I don't need that anymore either because I've got A2Cloud installed. What I do need, though, is a USB to serial adapter, and that is how you interface it with your Apple II. And then you're also going to need an Apple II serial cable that the other end is appropriate for your Apple II. It's going to be an 8-pin connector for a 2GS or 2C+, Plus, or a 5-pin connector for a 2C, or a 25-pin connector for a 2E. I get my cables from Retrofloppy. It needs to be a null modem serial cable, and all those details are on the website. Now, you can use a USB to serial adapter for either virtual drives or internet. If you want both, then you need two of them and two serial cables. So, that's what I'm going to do is connect two of them. Um, so, here we have this connector. It's connected to an Apple II serial cable. And I am gonna, this one is intended for um, virtual drives. The one that's connect, intended for virtual drives needs to go in the lower USB port of the two USB ports. You can see there's two USB ports there. I wanna put it in the lower one. Now, an oddity of the Raspberry Pi is when you attach a USB device, it will frequently reboot, and so it's actually starting up now, um, which you can actually see by the activity lights on the corner. And so, um, but while we're at it, we also want to have Siri, um, to be able to log into it and access the internet. So for that, I'm going to attach another USB serial adapter to the upper port. So, virtual drives lower port, internet and login upper port, and then the lower port needs to be connected to the modem port or slot two of your Apple II, and the upper port needs to be connected to the printer port or slot one. Um, all right, so we're going to wait patiently while the Raspberry Pi reboots or not, because actually this is just going to take us to exactly what you saw in the first video, which is the ability to log in. So just to recap what we just did, we had a screen and keyboard attached to our Raspberry Pi. We installed Raspbian. We didn't actually, but we're assuming you did. We booted it up. We typed the command to get the A2 Cloud installer. We ran the A2 Cloud installer. We shut down the Pi. We then disconnected the screen and keyboard from the Pi we attached two USB to serial adapters. The top one in the upper port connected to the printer port of the Apple IIc, and one in the lower port, and that one's intended for login, and one in the lower port connected to the modem port of the Apple IIc, that one intended for virtual drives. And that's it. That gets you to the whole setup where you can do everything that we just did in the first video. Uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them.